Hello, uh, I'm Kira, and I'm here with a brief status update from the Closure Data Science community. Um, so first, I just want to share a little bit of info about study groups that we have on the go. Um, we have several groups that meet on a sort of regular basis, meaning every couple of weeks or every month or so uh, to discuss different topics related to working with data in Closure. So one of the older groups that I've been helping moderate for some time now is this visual tools uh, study group. Uh, so this is just the SciClosure website. And on here we have Dev and study groups. So this visual tools one has been meeting regularly for a few months now since February. And we discuss uh, basically data visualization and literate programming in Clojure. So a lot of the libraries that we talk about are listed here. And uh, many of the maintainers and authors and contributors to these libraries are in the group and come regularly where we can discuss ongoing development and problems people might be having or projects people are working on. Um, so each meeting is, is a little bit different and it really just depends what people are interested in talking about that week. But um, this one is, uh, yeah, one of the older ones and has been going on for some time. We have also a more new-ish uh, group with a very similar style and very similar model, this data recur group. So this is um, very much modeled on the visual tools meet meetup or group and uh, yeah, follows a similar sort of pattern. So meeting every couple of weeks to a month, you know, a little bit less than the summer sometimes and um, has a very similar kind of concept where people just meet and talk about whatever they're working on, except the topic is more focused on sort of general uh, data work with closure as opposed to visualization specifically. So there's another new one. Um, this one's also recently started up joint prob. This one's kind of exciting because it's the first group that really uh, mixes members from the broader data science community. So in this group, it's mostly discussing probabilistic statistics and Bayesian statistics. Uh, but there are a lot of people in this group who are first and foremost uh, data scientists, as opposed to closure developers, where the other groups are more often people who primarily write closure and who are interested in working with data. So this one is an interesting group and it's a really exciting time because it's uh, you know it's really useful to hear from the wider community what people are doing and how people are working with data and how closure might be able to solve some of their problems where R or Python or something like that might've been a more um, natural choice. So this one also just recently started up this summer and is really exciting and promising. Um, related sort of to that um, kind of idea of broadening the community, we also have a new project on the go, uh, which is this data science course for closure developers. So the idea with this course is to really bridge that gap. So we have a bunch of people in the community who either write closure and have some data to work with, but aren't really sure how, or are experienced data scientists and you know, know a lot of stuff about visualization or statistics or whatever, but maybe aren't used to closure and use other tools right now for most of their work. And so the goal with this course is to kind of close that gap and introduce people to what's available in the closure ecosystem for working with data. And so we have had a couple meetings so far. Um, this, so far the plan for this course is to meet probably about once a month um, starting this fall. And yeah, just hear what people are working on, go over a little bit of background, cover a sort of different topic each time related to something, uh, something in closure and, and data, I guess they overlap there. And yeah, there's been a lot of interest. There's been a lot of exciting um, sort of ideas from the community about what, what we could talk about and how this could be useful. So this is another one to keep an eye on. And all of these communities meet regularly. The meetings are posted in uh, pretty much all of the Clojure sort of channels. So the Clojure Slack, the Zulip, um, Clojureverse, Twitter. So all those places, wherever you follow sort of Clojure news, um, hopefully you should hear about it. And um, yeah, that's a good segue, that last group, into another project that's on the go, which I'm working on. 
and it's this uh, closure data cookbook. So this project, the idea is for it to be um, kind of a companion guide or like textbook style resource almost for the course. So right now in Clojure, there are a lot of really excellent libraries for working with data and almost anything you want to do is possible. Um, and sometimes it's just not always obvious how. So a lot of the libraries are very specific to accomplishing like one certain task, which is a really nice sort of feature of the, the Clojure ecosystem that tends to be, um, you tend to get kind of small isolated libraries, which are really nice, but these, Libraries, sometimes it's not always obvious how they work together. So although most of them do have really excellent documentation, it tends to be more API doc style information with kind of very um, concrete, small examples for using a particular function in the library, as opposed to combining multiple libraries to solve a bigger data science problem. And so that's the kind of thing we're hoping to build with this, this project here. And it builds upon some previous efforts in the community. So some people might uh, be familiar with this Cyclos Data Science Handbook project, which has been going on for a couple of years. Um, and the idea with this was to basically build something similar. So something sort of along the lines of the Python Data Science Handbook or the R cookbook that exists. Um, so really a, a sort of example based reference for people to use and uh, learn how to use the different libraries that are available for, for their problems. So this closure data science handbook, yeah, like I said, has been under active development for a couple of years. Um, and, you know, you can see there's one chapter is published and several more have been written. Uh, but talking with Daniel, who was one of the contributors to this at the time, we learned, um, a couple of the reasons why it sort of fizzled that we're hoping to address and, and do differently this time around. So one is some issues with tooling and figuring out how to make these uh, examples kind of publishable and easy to copy, easy to get running on uh, your own machine. And the other one was a kind of lack of um, editorial consistency, you could say, or sort of um, persistence. So the idea with this new project is to, first of all, figure out the tooling situation and have a way to publish it that is easily accessible and useful and um, obvious how to get running yourself. So ideally, we'll figure out some sort of way to test the examples to make sure that they're up to date and it can be a very much kind of a live resource. So as new versions of libraries come out and new versions of Clojure come out, we'll be able to keep the examples up to date and hopefully find some sort of um, some sort of solution that that works for most people and that is also kind of easy to follow and easy to read. So this is one of the topics that we talk about a lot in the visual tools group. Um, like I mentioned, we talk about literate, literate programming solutions in Clojure, and there are quite a few newer, interesting projects that have been released since this project was really under active development. So there are some promising ideas um, for, for this next step. And, and then, yeah, the other thing is just having one person, who in this case would be me, um, kind of with a high level view of the project and kind of systematically filling it out um, and figuring out what what's missing. So yeah, this is this is the idea. This is the goal. We're hoping this could also serve as a kind of resource for um, library developers and people who who like writing code better than the documentation to see if there are any gaps in the community. So we have all these things that we know data people need to do or people working with data need to do. And you know, if we get to a certain section and it turns out accomplishing one of these tasks is cumbersome or difficult, that could hopefully help also guide the development of some of the libraries and and fill in the gaps and figure out um, figure out what's what's going to be useful for the community. So, yeah, so that's the kind of high level overview of this project that's currently on the go. Um, 
the the grand vision ideally is to really kind of open up the closure data ecosystem and um show people that it can be a really viable language for accomplishing a lot of really common data manipulation and data science kind of um tasks and so hopefully this book can provide some context around the libraries some examples and this is a yeah this is a style of teaching that i like um so i've done workshops in the past i write blog posts for myself and my company and um yeah i'm hoping to bring bring that experience with this sort of example based teaching style uh to this project so that's pretty much all i wanted to share um, you can find updates about this stuff, like I said, in all the places where closure uh, people hang out on the internet. I lurk in a lot of those places, so feel free to reach out anytime for anything. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be back after not too long with another update. Bye.